Let's talk about the Olympics. Um, yeah. Last year, you won your third gold medal right. on behalf of the United States. The biggest honor, David, is representing your country. You know, I love Duke. Uh, you know, college basketball has been my life. And, uh, but when you win a gold medal, a world championship, or the Olympic gold medal, it's the whole world. And we respect the world. Basketball around the world is unbelievable. And to have those guys with medals around their necks and your national anthem being played, and there's nothing better than that. Initially, you were an assistant coach to the 1992 uh, so-called Dream Team. Dream Team, yeah. Now, for those who don't follow basketball, uh, college basketball players were the ones who played in the Olympics before because of the rules of the Olympics. 1992 was the first time there were professionals who played, and those who played were Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, among others. What was it like to coach that team? It was a, literally a dream, and it really set off an explosion worldwide uh, for basketball. International pro players played anyway, and uh, uh, now the Manu Ginobili's, Mark, uh, Paul and Marc Gasol, when they were seven or eight year old, are watching, and, and it exploded. To be with them would be like if you were in music and you had the best singers all on one team, the best musicians, and true professionals. So when you coached that team uh, 11 years ago, you won the Olympic gold. What was it like saying to professional players, let me tell you how to do something? Well, you, you say how you, this is how I want you to do something a little bit differently than you do to college players. One is that they're professionals. The other thing is they have a wealth of experience. So when I'm coaching college kids, they're going to adapt to me. I'm teaching them uh, to change their limits to get better as a unit and individually. When I'm with LeBron James and Kobe Bryant and Chris Paul and all these guys, they're already accomplished. I want to know their best practices. And then my best practices and what we do, it becomes our best practices. So we do a lot of adapting so that, I think, uh, David, a key word is to create ownership, you know, where everybody owns it and where they feel like they're not playing for the U.S., they are the U.S. And uh, in order to get that feeling, too, we incorporated a lot of work with our military so that they could get a feeling of what it was to serve our, our, our country and no greater uh, part of our society than uh, the military to teach that.